three weeks of spy charges and countercharges reached their climax. Whitaker Chambers, confessed ex-communist, has sworn under oath that Alger Hiss, former high State Department officer, was a wreck. Hiss, here entering, has denied it under oath. Now they face each other in public for the first time. The committee asks Hiss... Uh, Mr. Hiss, uh, would you kindly stand up, please? Chambers, you stand up. Have you ever seen this individual who is standing? I have. Do you know him? I identify him as Anderson. As who? As George Frost. His sworn testimony directly contradicts Chambers on almost every point, from the disposition of his car and apartment to his party connection. Hiss names 34 prominent Americans with whom he worked, including Senators Vandenberg and Connolly, and former State Secretaries Hull, Statinius, and Burns. Ask them if they ever found in me anything except the highest adherence to duty and honor. Then the committee can judge and the public can judge whether to believe a self-discredited accuser whose names and aliases are as numerous and as casual as his accusations. The other side of this question is the reliability of the allegations before this committee the undocumented statement of the man who now calls himself Whitaker Chambers. Is he a man of consistent reliability, truthfulness, and honor? Clearly not. He admits it, and the committee knows it. Chambers, who has already sworn that he pleaded with Hiss to join him in leaving the party, is recalled in the middle of the dramatic nine-hour session. Asked why he singled out Hiss, he replies, The story is spread in testifying against Mr. Hiss. I'm working out some old grudge for motives of revenge or hatred. I don't hate Mr. Hiss. We were close friends, but we are caught in the tragedy of history. Mr. Hiss represents the concealed enemy against which we are all fighting and I am fighting. I've testified against him 